I see a baby boomer walk into a bar laughing at one of it. I see a Generation X walk into a bar and complain about the smell. I see a millennial walk into a bar and doesn't know it's because they're always on the bloody phone. <laughs> Me? I live my life through my phone. I've got all my calendar synced. My parcels are delivered by drones and to all my friends. I am linked. I hate it when someone rings, but I'm so in touch via Huffington Post. On Spotify, anyone can sing, but there's nobody I like the most. I like playlists above bands. I've got no records with which to boast. I can't make things with my hands. I'm plugged in, switched on, connected to all the lands. I've made an electric song using a plugin on Google Chrome, but I'm offended by love and Roman. On Twitter, I love to moan. I think a lot about privilege and fear. None of my property is my own. I've got debt coming out of my ears. And when you're not, nobody's home. You see, this guy I used to know, George, he came straight into the bar I was performing in. And I thought I'd do better than just ignoring him. So with the assistance of this here show, let's just see how it all goes. He just looks so awkward. So I thought I'd say, hello. Hello. <laughs> George. And Sim. Uh, oh my god, it's my turn! Oh, oh uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> how are you? God, I haven't seen you in ages. Oh, yeah, I know. It's so yeah. long. Well, the last time I saw you was, um... <laughs> what the hell, man? It's not on! Look, I didn't realise... It's not on, mate. You're not a dirty best friend, do you? <laughs> I may have overreacted. <laughs> No, I'm sorry. How, um, how are things with Sharon? Good. We broke up. Oh. <laughs> she moved to Hull. Oh. Hull. Yeah. <laughs> oh. God, it's been ages. Fancy a little drinky poos to catch up? Yeah. You were so <laughs> confrontational. You were up to that bouncer and just started singing. <laughs> I do like to be beside the Caesar. Oh my god, I thought I was so clever. I thought I could actually challenge the door policy of too many men on the grounds of gender discrimination. <laughs> but it's incredible that kind of I can do anything attitude you have at uni, you know? Yeah, right. Definitely don't have that now. God. So what do you do now? Um, poets. I'm a performance poet. Right. Yeah, you know, like that um, spoken word collective and alternative scene that we used to run? Oh, yeah, I'd forgotten about that. You anyway, mate, you bloody loved it. You were always there at all the events, weren't you? You were always really there. Anyway, yeah, I just carried on doing that, and here I am, a poet. Right. Oh, sorry, no, that sounds a bit rude. Um, no, it sounds really cool. It, it does, yeah, it sounds really cool. It is cool, but it doesn't really pay. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, what do you do now? Oh, uh, I work for a small, medium-sized charity uh, in Charing Cross. Educational curating for a stamp museum. Educational curating for a stamp museum. Oh, uh, it's for disadvantaged kids. Uh, basically, the idea is to keep them off the streets by getting them into stamp collecting. And it kind of works. You know, like, some of our best stamps have come from those kids. But we are constantly competing with a coin collection society for attendance, and they're so ruthless, they take off by it. <clears throat> anyway, uh, <laughs> it's not what I thought I'd be doing when I leave uni, but you know, who knows what they're going to be doing when they leave. Oh, sorry, um, how are things with your mum, by the way? No, oh. Quite... oh, good, yes, fine, good. Oh, I'm just, you know, I'm so busy at the moment with everything, it's good, good to, to be, be busy. busy. <laughs> yeah, I'm so how, um, the stamp factory. Uh, museum. Uh, stamp museum. <laughs> is it forever? Is it what you want to do? Uh, oh, uh, um, I don't know, really. I'm just so uh, oh. carrying on aimlessly through life. <laughs> Truth is, I don't know what I want to do. I am so bored. <laughs> you applying for the jobs? No. It's kind of, uh, I know the stamp museum isn't forever, but I just, you know, put an application in tomorrow. How hard can it be? It doesn't work like that. You can't just do it like that. Okay, well let's play a silly little game. Oh, what kind of silly little game? Well, I just kind of thought this was the perfect setting. <laughs> let's just imagine for a second that those thoughts at the back of your mind suggesting things that seem somewhat fringe on which life seems to hinge are played out here and now, suppose. And theoretically show the wantings of your soul. So humor me, humor me as I narrate this fake um, reality. Create potentialities that you might actually one day follow one, actually, but they're just imprints, they're shadows, they're moments so narrow, and I can be your thought 
thoughts, but reading them out. And we can work out what you're really about. Try to God's sake to structure and rhyme thoughts and propositions over this time. You're a tinker, tailor, soldier, spy. But it's 2017, so it's more like corporate lobbyist, small business owner, social media fiend, fitness guru guy. Firstly, <laughs> you become a workaholic seller. Go for that dream job and girl. That's what you're all about. And go. Uh, so, um, I uh, have some really good communication skills, or no, I am really good at communication skills. I have skills, I'm good at. So, I would love this job because insurance for tendering contracts has always been a passion of mine. Whoa, 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 stop you there. We aren't an insurance company. We tender for insurance contracts. We don't actually insure anybody. Uh, <laughs> 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 so basically, I just really want to make money. I think I'd be really good at it too. What do you do at the moment? Educational outreach at a stamp museum. Trust me, to get the kids I work with to buy into stamps, takes a bloody good sales pitch. <laughs> <laughs> so, you ready for the corporate life? Long hours, sharp suits, work hard, play hard attitude? Yeah, absolutely, that is what I want to do. So that's what I do. Um, you get the job. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it can be sales for a company called New MedTech, but spelled like N U MedTech, <laughs> like trendy way. I just got annoying when I spell like New. So. <laughs> but anyway, um, big money, good stuff. First day. to me as director of sales. This here is your desk, and uh, what are you going to spend your first paycheck on then? Oh, don't know. Um, Say something better. Um, I was thinking of having a massive party with DJs, champagnes, strippers, the works. You what? <laughs> um, I like your thinking, Jim. <laughs> it's George. Actually. I knew that, George. <laughs> hey, if you want that massive party, you better hit that first target to hit that big paycheck, Jim. <laughs> Dating is statistics, and I know that sounds kind of sadistic. But sometimes you've got to go out and just get it, because if you're being realistic, most of the time you won't get or be the perfect candidate. But enough dates, you might increase your odds enough to hit that jackpot. I am actually quite a nervous person. Really? Yeah. I mean, I consider myself a feminist. I think that's perfectly reasonable. Right, but isn't serial dating a bit creepy? I think it's okay to be a feminist, but at the same time really love women, you know, for their lust, for their femininity. <laughs> <laughs> I really like your um, ears. <laughs> Thanks, I, I guess. You're right, I don't think it is really about the patriarchy, because I want to oppose it. Exactly, and you know what would really oppose the patriarchy? If you did something really like avant garde, you know, in the bedroom. You know? <laughs> something really you know, avant garde, like, uh, like pegging. <laughs> What's pegging? Oh, it's. Um, <laughs> so, 
That's the head office down here. Uh, I work nine to five, uh, but sometimes my hours run into the evenings. That's how important I am. I travel a lot with a job. That's how important I am. Oh, I don't. I do gym. Oh, I gym too, but I prefer to do open water swimming when I can. <laughs> exactly. Sing. Huh. I have a wide and uh, active social group, some of which run club nights in the trendy pop town. Oh, I have a growing social circle, but could do with already having the in of a wide and active social circle who run club nights in the trendy parts of town. Oh, and I went to Oxford University. <laughs> Yours or mine? <laughs> so, um, how did you two meet? Was it Bumble, Tinder, Meetup, Plenty of Fish, Unicorn, Kink, and uh, you? <laughs> oh, what's that? Young professionals with no time. <laughs> <laughs> She seems great, this Katie. Still those Aldi grad scheme types. Yeah, but this could work, hypothetically. Ah, the Aldi grad scheme are right topic for poetry. <laughs> <laughs> Apply here, nothing to fear. 40k pay per year, no particular skills required. That's right, take a test. You're hired. Everyone will admire you in your business suit attire. It's the real life corporate dream. That's right, you're on the Aldi grad scheme. Making efficiency savings slicker. The scanning at the tills. It's even quicker as you smile faintly, travelling each week, your non crease suit begins to reap. New place each month, it's a barrel of fun in your bare bones flat, microwave dinner for one. Prick the plastic on your single man banquet, put your name down, join the team, you're ours to keep. That's right, you're on the Audi grad scheme. <laughs> I'm well, thank you, yes. Good, good, excellent. I mean, you know, the last couple of months you really smashed it, you know? You really hit all your targets. Really, really good, great stuff. And I love how much you've contributed to the free thoughts for. Yeah. Increase prices. Yeah. Drive up margins. Pay workers on the shop floor less. Dissolve unions. Really creative, creative, innovative stuff. Fancy me and you uh, frying some ideas up in the innovation walk? <laughs> uh, yeah, that sounds really conducive to a good 
work environment. Good, 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 good. <laughs> so, I've been thinking a lot about the uh, direction of the company. What do you think? What do you think? Oh, uh, good. Oh, a bit. No, but it's good. It's good. Bit. What? Let's explore and examine that moment that you said bit. <laughs> oh, um, well, I guess. It, well, we are a big farmer, yeah. uh, to some people, yeah. um, and I don't agree with that conspiracy theory stuff, though, but... Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly! And we need to manage that, don't we? Right. In fact, I've got a little job you may be able to help with. Right. Well, there's this MP that we may need to speak to soon, and I thought you might be the perfect guy for the job. Right. Anyway, I've got you a meeting at the Poor Colours House. Right. You know what that is, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Good, 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 good. Oh, you may need to, uh, just have a... A flick through that. Uh, right. Did a bit of prior information on the new legislation going through Parliament at the moment. You may need to remind him of his previous voting record and what the committee would say if he knew what else he'd be up to with us. <laughs> <laughs> Old friend, right? Right. You hear him say, protesting out on the street. Screw the Westminster bubble and the corporate elite! But you want to explain to them as you walk past their protest line. Things take time, things take time. What do you do with an institution? Do you wait patiently for slow improvement based on compromise and political enterprise? Or do you ally with the other side who just want to be angry and rise to the streets and to the walls of Facebook and shout at all, all, all the change we demand? But if the reins of power are put in our hands, will we actually be happy? Things take time. Things take time, but we're like fine with lobbying and using our influence to change from the inside this elite institution. We're not giving up on our values. We're just being clever. We're just making the world better. Well, for the pharmaceutical industry, at least. <laughs> We're going to have to break up. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, sure. Wait, what? Why? Oh, it's, um, it's really good news, actually. I've just been um, made a regional director of the North Northumbria area. It'd be really unfeasible to me. Um, but thanks for everything. Stay in touch, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Even in this hypothetical situation, I still get broken up with. <laughs> Are you sure you want all that? Sell out, um, hook up some any corporate girlfriend, lobby over some dodgy bill? I think you had a bit of an agenda coming through here. How did he know? How did he guess? Genius, mate, genius. Anyway, you don't really want to do all that, do you? Um, I really care about something, and that's your well-being, mate. It's important to me. Thanks, I guess. No, thanks. <laughs> okay, I've got another one. Why don't I not do all that stuff and... Oh, what? Um, okay, um, why don't I maybe go for more of a fitness thing? Do you know? Join the army! That's a great one, I've always said I could join the army! Fine. Great! Yeah! Don't know where that one came from. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are all piece of shit, you shit back. Wait, wait, wait. You wouldn't land nothing like that. You've seen people. How the heck are you like that? You like something like the 80s or something out there? At least I'm getting the fit. Up, get up right now. Here, take this gun. Go shoot someone. Here, pat on the bum. Now you're done. <laughs> it's the army. That's that's all I've got. <laughs> no, actually, maybe my mum would kill me if I joined the army. Yeah, you don't want to just join the army, man. No, but there are health benefits though to it. You know, like I would get really fit. I'd get massive, you know, like stamp. Because if I join the army, you know, you're right. It's quite aggressive. And very aggressive, and I can't, actually. Do you think maybe I could join, do the training, and then just quit before the whole war? <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh my god, you'd want the best of both worlds then. 
join the army and just leave after the war bit. Oh my god, you're such a classic millennial. So picky and you think it's so special at the same time. Well, at least if you believe that view of millennials that that online video best friend Snap talks about. The millennials in the workplace thing that's going around at the moment. Millennials. I've said millennials too many times, other times it's weird. Anyway, um, what else? Um, you know, like there's plenty of other ways you can keep fit. Like what? Well, um, save time in your commute, run or cycle, become a super healthy guy, so worthwhile, and when you achieve that lifestyle, post it on Instagram. <laughs> And uh, you can see here the correlation between data set A and data set B, and voila, we can see how popular stamps are going to be for the next five years or so. <laughs> oh my god, great presentation, Nigel. I really understand where stamps are going, it's crazy. Oh, yeah, I love the graph, Nigel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, George, great to see you. Yeah, oh, um, yes, George, just take a seat. Um, we're just talking about vision, just getting started, really. Oh, amazing, yeah, no, sounds good. Nice graph, by the way, Nigel. I like it, doesn't look at that. <laughs> yes. um, George, are you okay? You're going to be stressing quite a lot. <laughs> oh, the, yeah, I just... I cycle into work, you know, <laughs> care about my fitness. <laughs> I always jump up on the pavement, they anger at my derangement as they're burning toxic fumes, I'm burning breakfast as a zoo. <laughs> they overtake me with just a couple of inches. I try to catch the ride, but the windows are tinted, pedaling along, claiming, oh, it's all right, this. That's right, I'm a cyclist. I might be aggressive at times, but I understand a road user's concerns, and I'll prefer to discern myself from those velocipede users you'd say. Petrol pumping tin can bastards. They are careless driving, they're absolutely masters. Because I see both sides. Really, I'm just a smug, fleece wearing, privilege bearing, guardian reading, clean air needing, reckless riding, heart, healthy food, bar exercising, toy despising, cyclists. <laughs> Twitter. 
down that I'm where I'm slam, I'm smashing this here Instagram, my Facebook feed with make tears fall and hearts bleed, but I never get to see them skim or read it. A thumbs up like is all the pleasure I need. But hashtags to try and be specific And that gets me the Google Analytics That satisfies an algorithm And gets myself into a rhythm Thrusting harder, faster, stronger Into the hearts and minds of those Who wander through this vast continent The web, the internet The social network Full of trolls and jerks Where all the souls are hits And all the hits are quick And all the quick hits Make stars rich But leave souls feeling sick Maybe I'll become a quick rich hit misfit By posting this here poem on Instagram Hey, I think, um, what do you think of this life? I think it works, man. I think I could be happy this way. Cool. So it works out? Yeah. Let's see. George! Okay, Clive! How are, uh... Come on, just... <laughs> How are you? Good, good, man. I'm really good, actually. The, uh, these uh, two-hour lunch breaks that the Stamp Museum give us are really... really good, really good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was just thinking, sorry, man, just thinking about how good these two-hour lunch breaks are the Stamp Museum give us. You know, one hour for lunch, one hour for gym. It's yeah, just yeah, great, yeah, man. Yeah, good really to catch good, up. Really good, really good. Yeah. Oh, I, uh, yeah, I'll have a lunch save a stir-fry menu. Oh, yeah. Two lunch and stir fry. Yes, yeah, good choice. Yes, yeah, so thanks. So oh, good. such a big choice. Such thanks. a big choice. <laughs> so um, anyway, you um, just to ask, are you good? Are you oh? Yeah. One sec, one sec, mate. Sorry, it's just it's just work. Oh yeah, yeah no, I'm waiting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hello. No, 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 I'm not busy. No, 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 no I'm always working. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. No, 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 no buy. And then sell again. No, no, no I'm buying and then move the account. No, don't touch that. For the well-being. Okay, 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 oh, oh, bye, yeah. <laughs> bye, and there we go, good, good, so you, how are you, are you good, how's your well-being, are you happy? Oh uh, yeah, uh, Clive, I, um, inside I'm crying, inside I'm dying, I'll be lying if I said I'm fine, and really I could be better. But it's easier to say, oh, right, yeah, and walk away. Uh, I've been crying, but not in the way that I can own and be proud of and talk about loud. I'm not overcoming any big thing. Right, I'm just in a phase. And in a dozen ways, I'll be out of this in days. Honestly, it's just a phase. <laughs> I feel the feel trapped. I've got to do something big, something big to push it all away. Something big and... Clive, I'm... Moving to Australia. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you hear me? Yeah, yeah, um, great, like, Instagram potential and all that. Australia would be really, really, really good. Yeah. Cool. Bye. So, it is with a sad heart, I mean, too much, uh, heavy here in South London, so to all the people at the Stamp Museum, I will miss you, uh, to all the trendy kids in all the trendy bars, I'll miss you, uh, to the commuter who sneezed on me every morning on the tube, I won't miss you, yeah. to all the parks in London, I will miss running in you and drinking Prosecco in you in afternoons and evenings. <laughs> uh, so, uh, after some visa trouble, I'm all set to go. So, on my merry way I go, and remember me, delete. Remember to come visit me, post. Like! Hello, <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, <laughs> There. It's just in the back there, mate. You just keep going. <laughs> 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 Hello, mate. Welcome to me farm. Yeah. It's incredible you're the mate. Yeah. There's the sheep over there, right. and there's the um, llamas over there, and then you've got the kales over there, and then the kangaroos, and they be milking, so do the sheep, because we eat sheep milk here in Australia for some reason. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. And don't let a hunting dog near any of them. Yeah. 
this got the keys in its mouth for all the locks, so you need to get out all the first thing. You don't have to do that right, you're good. Yeah, great, right, okay, see you later, mate. So, great news, guys, I've been fired from the farm. <laughs> Turns out I didn't know anything about agricultural affairs. I should not have been left in charge. <laughs> anyway, on to Melbourne, post. So I made my decision. This place isn't right for me, and it's with such precision that I must exit Australia entirely. I must go away from this random land of hopes and dreams and racism on the level of a pepper that frog me. Not all is as it seems down under, and yet all is kind of as it seems down under. It wasn't the right culture for me anyway. I didn't fit in in so many ways. They were really rude, those Australian jerks, and not to mention the fact that I couldn't find work. Oh well, back to old blighty. It's alright, see, it might be that I find what I'm looking for there. So I need to keep a cool front and not despair. Look for that care in the world and pretend I'm on there. Oh, hey, man. Heard you're back in the country. Chat soon? Hey, uh, sounds like a plan, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, heard, you, um, heard you've come back. I haven't seen you in a while. Um, fancy a bike soon? <coughs> uh, hey, the extra ones. <laughs> Let me know where, exclamation mark, send. Oh, heard you're back on this sweet hallowed earth that is the UK soil. <laughs> Oh, okay, that's exciting. Let me know if you want to catch up via um, some Ouija board, or maybe uh, via SMS, or Skype, or maybe via carrier pigeon. <laughs> Send. Lol at carrier pigeon. <laughs> Send smoke signal your way soon. Send. Travel changes everything, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, travel's really bad for the environment. Hashtag zero carbon, hashtag we're only one planet. Hashtag the environment. Exactly. Issues, issues. Let's talk about them. Big ones, small ones. We can't do without them. Sustainably sourced, of course. You, take, you decide to take the charity sector by force. You change to a bit of an activist. You're not sure what attracted you to this. But the people involved are also attractive, big lifestyle changes, and all that stuff. <laughs> Sandra, good to see you. 
come in and I was hoping to see Parsley come in and I was told that Bertrand would be here. Uh, how are you? Oh, I've heard that you've been recruiting a new community engagement officer. Assistant, not officer. Oh, I won't bother applying then. <laughs> oh, come in, come in. Please, have a seat, please. Oh. So have you heard what the latest government proposals entail? Full support of that awful company, New Med Tech. Absolutely. Oh, with the foot cream. Oh, no, not the foot cream. Oh, you don't buy that. <laughs> yes, why? Oh, it's linked to goings on in the Middle East and all that stuff. Links to the arms trade. The foot cream. <laughs> yes, we believe in a full boycott of new med tech and it's all its subsidiaries. Don't you agree? Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> and that is why I believe in a full boycott of New Med Tech and all its subsidiaries. Um, because their foot cream um, is linked to the <laughs> <laughs> and at least, uh, you know, um, I'm not to control you, and it's so good to so many people here are supporting uh, us today. Oh, this guy, hey. Yeah. <laughs> George, I hope you don't mind, but I bought um, my own homemade aperitif with me. It's called Poirot del Bon Zecca. <laughs> slightly fruity, slightly tarty, and very alcoholic. Hold on, hold on a second. I thought we were being activist millennials, not count. Just, just go with me. Just go with me. No one's actually like this, Tim. Oh, man. Trust me. There are people like this. The extreme liberal middle class. Often found at evening drama therapy workshops. Or handmaking. Gluten free pasta. Fine, okay, I'll take your word for it, I guess. Um, so I'm just going to get back into it. Okay. Um, let me just get the chorizo von bon bon out the other. Chorizo von bon bon. 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 Brilliant. You've got it. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just get the trois for von bon bon and the other. Oh, darling, it doesn't have meat in it, does it? Um, oh, good heavens, it doesn't, does it? Oh, no, it's not pork in it, has it? <laughs> yes, uh, it does. Oh, dear, well, this is embarrassing. Yes, um, you see, Bertrand's um, recently gone pesky. Uh, that's, um, fish only no meat. I'm a veggie, and good old Sandra here is a vegan. And I'm gluten free. And she's gluten free. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All my friends are vegetarians. Eat meat, I keep daring them. All my friends are vegetarians, or at least it feels that way. What's happening to me? All these friends with strong values and dinner parties full of innovation. Lots of, oh, didn't know that worked. Oh, we'll have to try that. Oh, tastes just like meat. And I just sit there and stare into the middle distance and pretend everything is going to be fine. And as I ponder my existence and pour myself another hefty glass of wine, I march on a loony kipper and realize <laughs> I've accidentally become a veggie. The practically minded environment savior given some extra years of life for good behavior, a culinary master of innovation and flavor. But sometimes, sometimes I really want some steak. Like, really. <laughs> Isn't that just your life? No. Maybe. Or maybe I just like it to be. <laughs> um, Tim, I know I keep coming back with the basis. You know, when I last saw you, you know, it was your mum and everything. I remember. <laughs> Tim, I don't know. Tell me what we need to do, Tim. Oh. 
Oh, we're straying off topic. Um, what else? What else? Yeah. What else have you always wanted to do? Tip isn't what else, not only really evasive, and also a really lazy segue to your next poem. <laughs> <laughs> what poems? <laughs> or, or is it a really clever way of making you realise your own passions and drives if you had no inhibitions at all, holding you back? Fine. Um, I have always wanted to open my own bar. <laughs> leave your house, leave your job, live above a shop. Use your savings to begin your worthy investment in a crazy idea involving beer with a friend that reads poetry for a career. And you can like run it and do the accounts, like the management and everything. For me, I can like make a cocktail. <laughs> So, um, I, I will do it. Uh, I'll accept the voluntary redundancy. Uh, oh, we're not offering that at the moment. <laughs> uh, so, I will accept your money, and I'll use it to open a bar based on macaroni and cheese and men with beards. And I'll call it Cheesy Beard. <laughs> Who are you? How did you get into my office? How did you get into this bank? Uh, no, no, but, but everything's gluten free, even the beards? Get out of my office! Never contact me again! <laughs> so, um, in like, maybe like a year's time, um, somebody really latches on to idea. Yeah, yeah, uh, like, like, like BBC Three. Yeah, or, someone... Or, or like Made Liverpool. Made Liverpool. Where the kind of crazy cats that would give it... Or maybe that's a man or that's a man. Or something like that. Yeah, okay, something okay. like that. Right. Yeah, really, really cool. Like, soft focus on them. Like, zoom in and then out again. <laughs> zoom there. And brilliant. And planning shot there. And maybe like a real close-up of just the upper lip. Um, a really wide shot that's randomly. And then close-up again. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. We're about done there. This guy looks like he's talking about, Tim. I think it's going to really make us. What can I do you for me? Um, oh, I'll have the uh, latte teeny, please. Yeah, no problem. Tim, one latte teeny, please. And how are you paying for that today? Oh, in general, kudos on the Brixton network. Oh, yes, Sam. <laughs> Transferred. Nice one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Are you the owner of this fine establishment? Are you here for a follow-up documentary? No! I'm here to deliver this! What is it? It's a bag of shit! <laughs> As for driving out the house prices on my street, you gentrifying shit bag! If I'm driving the house prices up, you can just sell at a profit! Come on, man, where's your business acumen? Where's the acumen? Alright, mate, uh, we got that. <laughs> I didn't get it. Some guy dropped it off. He was complaining we'd driven the house prices up in the area. Oh, mate. Why did he just sell or divide to let us know that? Um, where's his business acumen? That's what I said. <laughs> you know, Tim, I don't think I'm street savvy enough to own a bar. Nah, mate. Club's best is play it safe. Yeah. Also, I don't think it's a very sustainable business model to constantly give away drinks for social companies. <laughs> You'd absolutely crash and burn, it'd be a disaster. <laughs> Look, hang on, everything we're doing so far is very grand and sort of, yeah. you know, there's quite some twist thing going on, but like, wouldn't it be easier if I just maybe settled down? Wouldn't that be nice? Hmm? Try that one. So, um, over the first, like, last and middle couple of weeks, um, Bertrand has just really, really just Loan on the um, Joseph Roundy Foundation's grad scheme program that he's doing at the moment. It's incredible. We've got him flying out to New York like yeah. every month. Yeah, there are some people, hey. Um, uh, look, actually, the reason I came to see you today is I was hoping maybe there's room for me to go up in the company within the Stamp Museum somehow. Yeah? Oh, well, yes. No, yeah. I guess that we can. Let's talk about, um, about Inverness. Okay. Oh, um, actually, um, more like, uh, you know. 10 miles up from England. It's a small stamp collecting community that exists up there in Scotland. Um, really, really dedicated stuff, some very rare specimens, very exciting. Okay. There'll be a small project team that could grow that you could lead up there. And um, 
there's an investment fund around that can develop that sort of thing. Um, really exciting and um, small community. Yeah, that things. sounds great. I think Emily would really like that. Oh, who's Emily? Oh. a book club that meets just for Russian works um, at Charing Cross? Is that? There is, yes. Um, it meets at 6.30 every Tuesday at the Stamp Museum Cafe. Oh, I know it well. I, I, sh I shall look for it now on my phone. Oh, um, no, actually, um, I don't think they've updated the website yet. Oh, They're yeah. really bad for it, yeah. Maybe right. check when you get home. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is my, um, this is my stop. It was nice to meet you. Emily. <laughs> 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 hey man, yeah, it, it, it's George. Yeah, a uh, bit of a weird one. Uh, you know the website? Yeah, have you heard of Master and Margarita? Right, okay, yeah. Margarita, uh, for example, uh, is a novel written by Mikhail Bergelov between 1927 and 1940, yeah. though unpublished in book form until 1967, and is critically acclaimed to be one of the best novels of the 20th century and one of the foremost in Soviet satires. What was your name? Uh, George? Do you know, um, there's a coffee shop just around the corner. There's also a bar. <laughs> <laughs> How did we meet? Oh, that's quite a funny story, actually. Oh no, you tell it, darling. <laughs> <laughs> You move out of your flat for one, and your adventure in Inverness has begun. Sink some money into a nice property and start to live like adults do properly. You're in love. Head over heels. A cat, a mortgage, and loving fields. Down on one knee, thank me whole, and the wedding bells begin their toll. I want to spend my life with you. Thank God, I want the same thing too. Let's get in a good catchment area for a school. Why would we do that? Oh. Oh, I'm being such a fool. Of course, kids, such a great idea. And watch your beers and friends disappear and be happy. 23, 24 years old, settle down on the sidelines to watch the future unfold. It's kind of all over now, it's all preset for you. And now and then you throw your bow and brow and sometimes feel regret and wonder. What happened if all that didn't happen if you followed your dream? Instead of her. Sorry, Tim, I think you're being quite damning of love. Well, maybe. <laughs> maybe I am. You're quite cynical, actually. Do you know that? Well, maybe I have good reason to be. No, 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 no. no. I'm just being realistic. You couldn't do that stuff anyway. Well, I want your version of it with that weird poetic twist at the end of it. <laughs> well, trust me, sometimes life is just like, no, okay, I just don't want any of that kind of stuff with a weird sort of like twisted ending. I just want to do something that will help people understand themselves better. So, um, all I've got to do now is to ask these last few exams, you know, because I've got a degree in sociology, but that doesn't matter. Um, and I've got experience working uh, with vulnerable people from the Charing Cross Stamp Museum, so I pass the exams, and I can do it. I can become a psychologist. Three more years of uni, and that's not the uni that's drinking and partying, that's the uni that's treating and looking after the mentally ill. 
practical placements on the job in the sort of places that you're regularly robbed. But it's important to get your personal journey right, because being happy in the dead of night, when it's just you alone with all your thoughts, that moment you realise throughout life, it bypasses everything you've always sought. Sex, material things, a good body, satisfies your wanting for more, and you can be happy and fulfilled right through to your core and have a strong answer to, oh, what do you do? Oh, this must be the ultimate life to choose. Come in, please. Hi, how can I help? Oh, it's not really about me, it's about my daughter, Karis, actually. Right, okay, well, go on. Oh, she's plagued by indecision at the moment. She's just coming up to her GCSEs and isn't sure whether she'd rather become a lawyer or a doctor. Well, right. It's very normal for a child of 15, 16 to go through that. Oh, no, 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 no. She's actually just 11. She's taken very early. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no bother. Right, well, if you just have a look at this menu right here and this pen, and just take what you want and we'll get that sorted out for you. Oh, yes. No, no, she is. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see, you've chosen anxiety, depression, ADHD. Mixed there, right. Well, <laughs> just take this. It was the girl on the way out, and she Thank should you. sort you out no problem at all. Next, please. <laughs> George, I've heard so much about you. What is it you do again? Oh, me? I'm a psychologist. <laughs> See, no, Tim, that's what I'm talking about. That's that cynical, twisted button and everything. You know, with the whole, like, picking from a menu or prescribing a drug thing, you know, that's quite offensive, Tim, and really damaging. It's not all right. <laughs> well, what do you want to do? I just want to help people, help people understand themselves. That's what I want to do. Well, just do that, then. They're just your dreams. You're not really going to do anything anyway with any of these things. You're not really going to pursue them, are you? Anyway, I think we're at the end of this journey, both metaph metaphorically and physically. As in, I'm bloody tired and we're running out of science. <laughs> um, bit of an awkward question now, after all that. But, um, I've got a place to stay tonight. Can I crash at yours? I'm just thinking. Yeah, we're fine. I was really worried about that. Oh, anyway, here we go, taxi! <laughs> oh, mate, I uh, just have to get some cash out, mate. Just, um, just stop here. Cool. What's he doing? There's a door back here. So, mate? Yeah, yeah, it's been an alright night. Yeah. Yeah, at really start for me. So I do get up, I go to bed, I occasionally shave, I think I'm well read. I kind of write down my thoughts in the structure of a report. I try my best to grow a beard, do my best not to act weird. I click send on emails, go through all the details, update various forms of communications, pick and choose my extracurricular activities in the hope one day they'll be curricular for me. I dream, I love, I want too much, I cry, I make jokes, but if I spoke all that to you, some bloke, I'd write me off for some joke. What do I do? I work at Charing Cross. Oh, there we are. Hey, it's back over again. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, oh, hello. Uh, uh, and go, mate. To get trained back in the morning, yeah? Yeah, mate. Like, super, super off peak one. The only one that would work with those, um, that 18, 16 to 25 rail card. Bloody virgin trains, eh? Oh, here we are. Cheers, Thanks, mate. mate. Yeah, Thanks. cheers. Manchester. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that a bit, you know, fucking glum, fat I probably should have said something to begin with. I'm sorry, before everything else, when we discussed everything, there's a, something I need to tell you, talk about. What do you mean? I travelled, I left, 
and did not look back, turned up my metaphorical cap, packed my bag full of all I needed, let go, and proceeded to leave at 4 a.m. without sound or explanation, quietly moving on and out to the station. As the day's light grows, our contact is lost. Found my young freedom, but at what cost? One day I'll come back and I'll tell you how it was to live, man, to be truly free and young, to simply be. As I sit under the same stars, this pathway has taken me so far. I remember the noise of the game, the familiar talk when I was late, the conversations about exploring your willingness initially and me being more than just staying at home with you. You told me to travel, to leave, to go. I took your hand and I let it go. Boarded a train and let you go. I left without words, I couldn't assert it. Your illness worse and I, I couldn't bear it. And I know you keep texting. I can see you're not forgetting me. And it's hard because for you, every day is a completely new reality. Except some days are better. Some days it's just a, I love you. <laughs> but usually I have to explain it away. Deep down, I know you understand that I couldn't stay. But I know we're going to have to relive this sorrow when I tell you it all again tomorrow. Sometimes people look great on the inside, but on the outside they can feel like nothing. Tim, I am. Look, I'll find my own way home. It's just you now.